Hi everybody, it's Phil Strong here. Thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, today someone's written in and I said, can you please explain compound interest? Oh my goodness, <laughs> I think this is going to take a while. We perhaps need to sit down, get a cup of tea and work out how we're going to do this because compound interest is actually quite complicated. But let's, let's have a go. Compound interest basically is defined as when you, uh, with regards to a savings and investment, it's when you earn money, when you earn a return, when you get paid interest on top of your interest. Okay, let's work, um, let's work something out. Let's say you have $100 in the bank and the bank's paying you 10%. That'd be nice, isn't it? And let's forget tax and all that complicated stuff. So you put your $100 in, the bank comes back and they say, here's your interest and they give you $10, which is your interest. And so you say, right, I'm going to reinvest that money. So now your investment has grown to $110. Now that you have to do this for it to compound, for it to grow on itself. So $110. Now when they come back and they say, hey, we're going to pay you 10% on your money. They're going to give you not $10, they're going to give you $11 interest. And you're going, wow, this is great. So you, you add it to your investment. And now you've got $121 in your account. And so you leave it there, and next time they come back, they say, hey, we're going to pay you 10% return. And what that means is they're going to pay you $12.10. So you can see the amount of interest that you're receiving keeps growing and growing and growing. And soon, you're going to get paid um, much, much more interest as your money grows. Okay, so that's what compounding interest is. It's when you earn interest on top of your interest, which means that your investment grows much faster. Okay, now... I need to address something as well when it comes to compound interest because compound interest also works on your debt. Those of you that have a mortgage or hardcore credit card debt that you can't pay off, you're paying compound interest. Let me explain it in the same way with uh, some simple numbers. If you buy a pair of jeans for $100 and you can't pay for those jeans so you leave them on your credit card. Now the credit card company is going to charge you 20% per annum. So let's say you leave it there for a year and you don't pay, pay it off. Now they're going to charge you 20% which is $20 and they add it to your debt. So you now owe the credit card company $120 for your jeans. Let's say you don't pay it off for one more year. They're going to come back to you and they're going to say, hey, you owe us $120. We're going to charge you 20% on that money. So what they do is they calculate 20% of the $120, which is $24. And so they add $24 to your debt, which means you now owe $144 on the credit card for the jeans that you're probably not even wearing anymore because they're two years old. So can you see how compound interest works in the opposite, um, in a negative way, when you actually owe someone money. And it's much, much, much worse for those of you that have got a mortgage and are paying it off the very slow way. All right? So that's how compounding interest works. It's called the eighth wonder of the world by some people, including me. It's fantastic when you're earning it because your investment goes up much faster. But it's dreadful when you're paying it on debt like a mortgage or a credit card. So I hope that's helped today. My name is Phil Strong, and I thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to catching you back here real soon. Until then, take